What's up, nerds? Welcome back. Today, I got a bunch of stuff planned. We're going to be taking on two new Hall of Fames, and we're going to be heading back to the castle to build some really cool spiders. But before we do that, I'm going to have to go collect up a bunch of tough and a bunch of copper, so you already know where I'm going. Time to dig out a trial chamber again. This is the same trial chamber I've been digging out for quite some time now, but it's got tons and tons of tough and tons and tons of copper, obviously. So let's go ahead and start doing that a little bit so I can get what we need in order to do these Hall of Fames. Another major resource that we're going to need in order to make one of these is we're going to need about 900 item frames. So I'm going to be buying those periodically through our cartographers. And down here, I plan to put the Steampunk Hall of Fame right at the very end of the Dark Factory Hall of Fame. And you already know I'm going to be yoinking all the tough in here. So we're going to have to set up a beacon. And on the other side of the monument, we have another hole that we're working on. But I already have a beacon set up for this one. This one's going to be for Middle Earth. So I think we're actually going to start here because the other one's full of deep slate. And this one's already got a beacon, so I could be more lazy and I could just start digging away. So we're almost there. I need to have enough spots for about 30 plots. And while we're digging out our new Hall of Fames and everything, we're going to make sure that we're buying ourselves some item frames. I only have two cartographers that will sell me item frames, unfortunately, so I can only do 24 at a time, sadly. But hopefully we'll have enough by the time we have everything properly dug out. Who is John? Our item frame guy. Thank you, John. And who's this guy? Pedro. Pedro, Pedro, Pedro. No, we're not doing that. Anyways, yeah, about 24 at a time. So I could probably get 48 in a day or per cycle. I just have to wait for the clock to basically go on over. That way I can do another cycle, but I'm going to be here for a while. Speaking about Hall of Fames, I have started the Middle Earth Hall of Fame. And I think I've got a cool design that looks really neat going all the way down here. Got a little bit of a blue sky using the ice. And then we've got like the nice like archways. And I, I really like this palette right here. So time to basically do this like 30 plus more times. So yeah. All right. So I've got all the walls all the way down. I literally just got replay mod. So I'm not going to replay mod this stuff and do like some weird time lapse. But I'll do a weird time lapse or the next one after this, which will be steampunk and whatnot. But I got the majority of all the walls put up in place now. Now I got to start focusing on these pillars and getting some other things going together. All right. Now we've got all the entirety of this Hall of Fame basically built up. We got all the, the archways done, the little like things in here, but we're missing the item frame. So we're going to start adding in all the item frames. And then I think I could say we're pretty much done. One really cool fine detail that I did add was the Eye of Sauron over there using bigger armor stands, which is pretty cool. I'm hoping that will come to the new armor stand mod that I utilize, but I just start placing down about, what, 600 item frames? Well, we almost had enough item frames. We're going to need about another 18 item frames in order to finish this, but we almost made it. This is uh, pretty much every single Hall of Fame plot gets 15 item frames, and I think it was just shy of 600 item frames in here. I'm going to be doing a little bit of uh, potatoes and grass on the ground as well. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back. And this should be the very last one I want to do here. Now I'm going to basically come through here and I'm going to do all of the, the potatoes. I'm going to do a little bit of bone mealing. That's way too high. I want to do like the small grass basically. And then we'll put uh, like potatoes every once in a while. So like, like right here. Oh gosh. Well, hopefully we don't see that. Anyways, you know. Got to have potatoes inside the Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, deal. Because, you know, potatoes, potatoes are life around here. So I'm just going to kind of farm these up a little bit. So we'll just like plant a couple here and there, like in little patches and stuff. And now that we have all the item frames in place, there you have it. We are fully done. The Lord of the Rings Middle Earth Hall of Fame here. The only thing left to do is add people in here. But before I actually do that, I'm going to start building the Steampunk Hall of Fame. So I think we got ourselves a little bit of a template here. I got to do this guy on this side and go all the way down, but I basically cleared out the other side here and I need to put the pathway in here, all the logs and stuff like that. So I think that will make for a really good time lapse. <laughs>
I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse. We have one last thing to do, but the time lapse is kind of funky with it. I built a little bit of a ceiling right here. And I think this looks awesome. We just have like the orange uh, frog lights in behind the grates here. We want to kind of keep it very rustic. So this is what I've come up with. I think it goes really, really well with the actual Hall of Fame and stuff. And then we'll just need to like close it off. And I've got a plan for that too. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set up all the scaffolds all the way down this tunnel. And then I'm going to start building up all this. So I'll see you guys in just a bit. And there you have it. We're completely done this Hall of Fame. So we can start incorporating people in here. I even edited it off a little bit, making it look like the train actually goes through. Something funny that would be cool to do later would be like a Wiley e. Coyote right here. Then maybe like a cheeky painting or something like that. I think that'd be really funny. But these are the plots fully done up now. So now we just got to get some people in here. We got the whole ceiling in place. Absolutely love the ceiling. I love the way that this Hall of Fame turned out. Let me know which Hall of Fame is your guys' favorite between the Lord of the Rings and the Subway Steampunk one. Uh, yeah, but let's move on to the next thing. And that next thing is going to be trying to find this wandering trader because I did have one spawn in when I was building up the Hall of Fame. So I got to figure out exactly where this guy is. Kind of puts it in perspective how like how long these Hall of Fames are. So let me see if I can find this guy. And we found him out here in the middle of the water. Love trading with wandering traders out in the middle of the water. Hold on. I don't have my emeralds either. Pause. Uh, hopefully this guy doesn't price gouge me, but hopefully we can get something cool out of this guy. We've already gotten that. Got that. That thing's still scuffed. Rainbow heart. Furnace. And an hourglass. So nothing, nothing new. I lied. Just in case I didn't show you guys, this is the new hardcore rainbow heart. Mandolin made this. Pretty, go pretty gosh darn snazzy, if you ask me. I guess it's also time to clean up our uh, our mess here, huh? Bring it back to the base. Get a bunch of name tags and also name tag everybody in here. So let's do that. And for those of you guys who are ever wondering where all my levels go, basically, in hardcore, is pretty much from naming every single one of these things. So this is everybody that's going to be going into our... Lord of the Rings Hall of Fame. And then down here is going to be everybody who's going to be added to my Steampunk Hall of Fame. I won't showcase them right away. I'll let them get all dressed up before I show them on YouTube. Speaking of dressing things up, I completely revamped our iron farm. It's nothing pretty yet, but we did manage to get rid of our old iron farm facilities here. I do have a rare zombie up in there and then a named one up there. Got rid of all the pods here, which is super sad. Down here, I actually managed to build ourselves a brand new iron farm that I think gives us... A, I don't know what the rates are exactly yet, but it's nothing pretty. It's nothing uh, good to look at or anything like that, but it's functional. So we're not without an iron farm, which is super nice. We also have an auto crafter down here that will auto craft all the iron into actual blocks. And then put them in block form down here. So I'm going to let this basically run throughout the entire stream today. And I'm going to see how many iron blocks that I can basically get on a normal, normal stream. While the iron farm is doing its thing over there, I'll be doing my thing over here. And that is taking on a triple, no quad, quad spider spawner down in here. So let me explain what we got planned down here. So we have our four spider spawners right here. I want to use the potion of weaving as well in order to kind of uh, also make cobwebs down here as well. But I'm going to be digging out the entire area down here. That way the spiders can't crawl up any of the walls. And I want to bring them into a, like a central location. That way I could farm them up. So let's get to digging and let's see what we could do with this whole space. Okay, so now that we got the entire area completely dug out, I'm going to start removing some of the torches. I have these potions of weaving right here. I want to see what happens once I fire this up and splash all the spiders with weaving. I want to see if we get like a ton of spider webs, but... Let's go ahead and like just knock out all these torches now. We should get like a, a decent amount of spiders kind of going. Now I just got to get up to the platform. So I might need a minute to do that. Uh, it seems like some of the spiders do get caught off in the distance, but a lot of them do start tracking me and they start coming over here. So I'm going to kind of like let this build up. I don't really know what's going on there, but I do plan on adding some water streams to help like combat this a little bit so let me wait for these guys to keep coming in i don't know if they're affected by the mob cap by any means and this whole area will be far darker than what we got going on here but the main test that i want to go with is this so i hit those guys with the weaving and what happens 
when I start killing them. Oh, dang. Oh, that's a lot more than I thought we were going to get. Okay. I just got to get my way out of here. Hold on. That's a way more than I thought. Okay, time for the real test. How many cobwebs did we actually get from that many spiders? Because I know we definitely got a lot of string. So I'm just going to farm this up real quick. I, I don't know how I feel about the new sh cobweb sound. How do you guys feel about the new cobweb sound? Okay. So well over a stack. That's that one little run right there brought us up to 43 cobwebs. Nice. I think one awesome thing about these guys is these guys scare spiders. So we're going to push these guys into the hole and we'll be able to basically breed them up and utilize them as a big mechanic of how this spider farm is going to work. So now just time to get him in here. So I have my slow. F uh Oh, hold on. I got to get them closer to the hole. I got my slow falling potion. I'm ready to go. So I just don't want them accidentally falling in without the slow falling effect. Otherwise, we're probably going to lose some armadillos. He looks good. And... He looks good. Nice. That makes three armadillos, which is pretty crazy. I don't know what the range is for one of these guys, but if we could scare all the spiders into a central hole, which I'm going to try to line up right here, then we can make like a really cool like weaving farm. Okay, so we now have a little bit of the walls in place here. So this is going to be the actual spider pit. Obviously, I got to put the floor in place and then the armadillos. On this side, I want to build a little bit of a laboratory with a viewing window looking in here with a really cool lore. But emeralds in hand, you know what that means. We got ourselves a wandering trader. So hopefully we can get something new here. Please. Oh, that's new. We got Licky Lick. No way. Uh, we got Harley Quinn, we got a witch hat, pile of scrolls, red button, and a hay bale. But, if you guys watch Pokemon, then let me see if I can put it over here. Then you know what that is. That's Licky Lick. But, time to build the floor here. And well, after a seven and a half hour long stream yesterday, which is our normal day, we got about nine... About 12 stacks of iron. I took a little bit from this the other day, but I'd say that's fairly decent. Kind of hard to gauge because it's baking into a full block, but iron farm's working. And well, about a day and a half later, finally have something that's actually functional. So let me show you guys a little bit how this thing works. So it's really cool. We have the armadillos to scare the spiders on in here. We have, apparently I missed that. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. Turn off all these lights. Let me turn down the mob sounds because this is absolutely insane. So bring it down to like, I don't know, five. Um, I did kind of expand this area down here, but I have the all lays that are going to kind of give me my string and such. But there's also something really cool I want to show you guys. Hopefully it works. So it gives us about 2,500 string per hour, give or take. But I got something really cool to also add to this deal. So by activating this water bucket, I'm now kind of pushing the spiders off of the platform. That way I can start harvesting all of the cobwebs. So I have all of my weaving potions right here. I'm going to let these guys kind of build up over time. And then we're going to hit them with the weaving potions. And I get something really cool to show you. And once we get a bunch of spiders basically built up like this, I release the button, grab my potion of weaving, let them all run towards the center here. And then I splash them. And look at how many cobwebs I'm going to get from just two potions. Two potions probably are not going to be completely necessary, but... And then I'm going to activate all these guys again. The all lays will be okay. They could basically tank the damage. I might make the area where all of the magma blocks are a little bit smaller just to kind of help with the lighting and stuff but let's see how much this actually gives us so two potions gave me 51 cobwebs honestly i could probably just use one potion because one potion before in my control test gave me 48 so technically only using one potion will give me about a stack almost one thing i will do is i'm gonna 
make this a little bit smaller just to kind of help out with the light levels here and then i got a really cool build that i want to build up here that i'll explain to you guys here in just a moment so just let me kind of get in here a little bit hopefully i actually have enough black glass for this i'm not sure if this actually affects the rates of the farm but i want to do a little bit more testing so that's a that's a little bit of a smaller area so let's test it out one more light that seems to be the perfect amount of light it doesn't like bleed on over to the spawners. I think this is actually nice. Seems like the good happy medium. I like this a lot. And with that test, with one potion, we got ourselves 50 cobwebs. So I'm going to go ahead and say one potion is all we need. All right. And as for this area, I'm going to be building up a little bit of a laboratory with a spider's den over here. So it's going to be like kind of like a trapdoor spider, like entrance into a laboratory. Where we're going to be looking into this chamber here working on some gene splicing what is gene splicing well we're making spider bees so we're combining spiders with bees this is basically what this laboratory is all about it's been long abandoned maybe this project went horribly wrong but where these guys are going to be on their way to beehives to basically infiltrate the hive and to take over the hive eventually during the war between the spiders and the bees there you have it. Spider farm is done. We built ourselves a little bit of a spider tunnel that goes into here, kind of like a trapdoor spider's den, and it goes all the way up to the surface. But here's the laboratory here. So we make all of our potions of weaving over here. We have ourselves these little cryo, I don't know what these things are called, but these little cryo thingies where we're developing the new spider bees so they can infiltrate the hive like i said and some of them actually got out which i think is really cool and then try to make it look really like abandoned and run down and then right in here is the actual farm but now that we have all the cobwebs we can actually start using them over at the castle area but before we do so let me show you guys a little bit of the surface i know this does look a little bit funky but it's supposed to be the entrance to the spider's farm i do plan to do a whole lot of terraforming in this area so this area is heavily under development. I could actually start spreading out the candles throughout the Skulk lands now if I want to, but I don't have a Skulk farm yet. And we're officially back to the castle. I did a little bit of work, so don't get upset with me. Uh, anyways, we did this in a live stream. We got like a nice like cobweb right here. Looks really cool. I'm going to build a spider on top of that. Down here as well, I built a bunch of cobwebs like kind of coming up to the bridge kind of give it a little bit more of a dynamic shape and stuff oh there's a wall there hold on uh same thing goes with like that area over there and a little bit of an area over here but today we'll actually be working on the outside of the castle over here the actual castle wall so i built a big giant hole right here where we're gonna have a big wolf spider breaking its way through the wall so we're gonna be building that organic today and then i actually have to build up the staircases around here all throughout here it's gonna be like a nice garden like nice topiaries and stuff hopefully i said that correctly so we're gonna have like nice flowers and stuff like that but this is where i'm going to start introducing more spiders to actually build the bug battle fast forward a little bit and we got ourselves a little bit of a spider going on here it's going pretty well give him some bristles on his little beard with his fangs got some little like pupils here with invisible item frames some eyeballs got some legs I'll show you guys the other side of this guy that we're slowly working on. We're doing like the markings of the wolf spider down the back. So now I got to take like this and bring it all the way back basically. And then put some lighter browns and stuff like that in here. Kind of looking like a little bit of a tarantula, which uh, I'm kind of a fan of, but I love the eyes of this guy. Cause I think it really brings him to life a little bit. Yeah. There's a little bit of an update on the spider. Check him out. Changed his mustache up a little bit. Gave him a little bit of bristles. Gave him some fangs. He's looking sick. Up and over here, we also have this. So he's got a little bit of a textured uh, body to him. But there's one really cool thing that spiders do. And this in particular spider, I think we can work something out here. So wolf spiders keep their babies on their back. I kind of want to see what this would look like. So... Um, let me see if I can plop that guy down like that. Maybe we'll plop that guy in like that. And we'll give it some legs. 
and we've got mini spiders. This is probably the closest I could possibly get to small spiders and whatnot. But the idea behind this is like he's going to like basically infiltrate the castle by breaking through the wall and the babies on its back, aka nightmare fuel, is going to be coming in here like pouring on in. I also have these guys right here, which is a micro block. So I could probably place a few of these guys like kind of like crawling down the arm, if that makes sense. So these guys could look like little like black widows like coming down the arm of the spider type deal so we could just play plop these guys in here pop that and one thing i really do want to check out i know it's not map monday but i haven't updated the map in a hot minute and i kind of want to see what this guy would look like on the map and just like that we got another map to add to the mix so check them all out you can see the development of the castles and the spiders in our new addition, the wolf spider, which I think looks awesome from up top. Holy cow. Could we just take that in for a second? Bruh. Love it. Oh, and then you can see like the black widow. We now have the wolf spider. I want to make an orb weaver, which I think in like an orb weaver back here would look kind of cool, like in the garden type deal. Cause I feel like that's where you would see an orb weaver, but I think that looks spectacular. On to the next thing. So we have our spider breaking in through the wall right here. Obviously, there's a lot of terraforming that needs to happen, but I want to build some really nice topiaries back here. So got a little bit of the pathway figured out. Going to start putting in some gardens and stuff like that. I would ultimately like to try and figure something out. I'm thinking like between these guys right here, the azalea and the flowering azalea. This could like be a cool like little border right here that we can border all of our pathways with maybe maybe we'll even mix in some of the uh the regular azalea so it's supposed to be a little bit more of like a manicured garden doing all of that and then on the inside here we could build like raised flower beds and stuff okay we now have a little bit more of the pathway figured out here. I got myself a little bit of water where I plan to put a coral reef along this wall right here. I got something to show you guys, which I'm kind of building up slowly. I'm going to be building an orb weaver right here. So I'm kind of mapping out how I want to make that happen. Obviously live on Twitch. But I got my legs coming in here. A little bit of the web design that's subject to change, probably. The body that I'm probably going to be putting in here. So I'm going to start working out the body of the orb weaver. And then I've got some other, like, really cool things to go along with this. But I really hope it kind of fits within this space. But that's kind of where I'm at right now. I have a little bit of a tulip garden. Already showcased the wolf spider. I think, like, having a coral reef up in here would be really cool. And, like, having spiders, like, crawling up the wall over here doing some really cool stuff maybe even like a hive some hives like working off of this and i did all of the walls going all the way around here the honeycomb walls uh where i want to build up some more like moss trees i think would look really neat putting some moss trees up here and like even bone mealing them so i have a little bit of a grass we have ourselves the coral fans here just to add a little bit of color and we've connected it to the actual build itself so i can walk in and out freely I'm kind of planning to do a little bit of a sundial in the front here. I think a sundial would look really, really cool. And then we can get around to doing some other spiders, such as like a jumping spider, maybe jumping over towards the bridge and an harvestman spider, which I think would look really cool. Even though I know it's not actually a spider. I know you guys are going to be in the comments but like, oh my God, Link, it's not a spider. They're insects. But, you know, I'm going to get back over to the orb weaver. Now we got a light bulb with legs. This is going to be the thorax right here and the abdomen back here. The leg coming along down here. And then I'm going to build up the leg back here. And then we got a couple of little legs and stuff like that. But this should help maybe visualize it a bit better. There you have it. I've got all the legs on the giant light bulb now, which I think look awesome. So I've got a little bit of a plan here. I plan to connect the spider legs up to the wall, making it look like it's supporting itself up there. Also connecting it up to the tower there a little bit. And then I'm going to rebuild like a bigger web kind of going across up here. So this web behind the spider is probably going to get dismantled, which is okay. 
uh i didn't really like the look of it anyways but i love the look of the spider and here's just one more view of the spider as we fly in over top of the wolf spider i think it's going to be a perfect center point towards the back side of the castle so very excited to make this happen and for the spider i was thinking about using yellow terracotta black concrete and orange terracotta i think these colors are going to go beautifully with the wall here and do a little bit of standing outness standing outness i think it's going to stand out and work really well here so let's go ahead and start doing that Look how creepy that looks. I think this thing turned out absolutely fantastic. I used terracotta pots for the eyes and diorite for the walls. Keep calling them walls, dude. They're fangs. Fangs. Fangs, fangs, fangs. I'm not redoing that. Anyways, I think it looks so cool. Hope you guys like it. But that's an orb weaver right there. I'm going to have to put like the spider web in behind it, making it look like it actually has something going on for it. And then I've got another spider that I want to take on. And that will be the Harvestman that I was just talking to you guys about. And I know it's not actually a spider. But I think like having like the ability to walk underneath a giant spider. And I'm going to keep calling it a spider. Because I don't like them. And they look like spiders. So they're very creepy. But I, I really like the way that this guy turned out. But anyways, time to build the web. Now that looks a little bit more natural with the web in behind there. Now it doesn't look like the spider's just dangling there. But I also built another spider. Well, lack thereof. I was already talking about this earlier in the video. But we have ourselves a harvest bin over here that I'm extremely happy with the way that this guy turned out with a bunch of fence posts and stuff. Put some candles on its back, give it a little bit of hair. Got the dragon heads for the eyes and the invisible item frames with some little fangs. And then we have the fence post coming all out here, which was quite a journey, but I love it a lot. His name is Dave Dangles. So he's even got a name. That's really cool. I'm um, filling in a little bit of the gaps of the walls here. So I also put in, oh, if I can get around here, a little bit of this area here just to kind of take up a little bit more of that space because this was looking like a really flat wall wasn't very happy about that so i pretty much just did it all the way through and then i want to do something down here for this wall right here just to kind of take up a little bit more of that space i need to light up this area a little bit better to get rid of all these torches so i'm going to probably going to use the moss carpet to hide a bunch of like frog lights back here and then i got another spider plan for the front so with the front facade of the castle, I would like to have a jumping spider looking like it's jumping from over here over to the bridge. So probably like mid jump, like right up in this little spot. So we can have like a jumping spider, kind of like a little bit more of a dynamic pose. And then I would like to kind of address the front side of the castle a bit more because having just the grass and stuff, we need a little bit of help here. So we're probably going to do that. That side obviously needs some work, but we're working on things things are coming together but yeah just a quick little update on what i've been working on well i guess you could say we've been a little bit busy i terraformed the entire front of the castle with all the blossom trees and used a bunch of bamboo and everything like that and also built a bit of a jumping spider let me know what you guys think about the jumping spider this was probably the hardest look this was most certainly the hardest spider i've ever had to do i spent seven hours trying to build this thing on a live stream and I'm still currently in that live stream. So this is what we got going on here so far. It's got the little derpy eyes. It's got the little fang here. It's got a dynamic pose where he's jumping over to the bridge, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. But moving forward for this whole deal, I'm going to be moving these maps inside of the castle in this particular spot. Let me show you guys where that's at. And I think that's going to be right here because we got a nice like blank spot inside the castle that I think all those maps are going to work out beautifully. So I've got all of this basically mapped out unintended. Anyways, we're going to have like that whole deer, old deal or ordeal. Going to have that whole ordeal so you guys can actually see what's going on there. But before we do that, there's something else I want to do real quick.
And that's basically approaching the castle over here. You'll notice that we've done a little bit of the landscaping. This is a little bit of a walkthrough. Where the actual spider is jumping in from, though, I've got something that I want to do. Making it look like the spider's actually coming in from something. But we got a bunch of these really cool, like, Black Widow spiders, like, coming out of, like, little crevices and stuff. Got the little, the P redacted spiders up in here, you know? I think that's very beautiful. I was going to put a stream coming through here. But since this spider turned out a lot bigger than I anticipated, I kind of figured that this spider wouldn't be just jumping from, like, an area where trees are going to be chilling at and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach, like, a little bit of a cobweb system, throw it down on the ground because he's going to have, like, a little bungee, bungee cord system just in case he misses the bridge. You never know. He could probably miss the bridge. I doubt it, though, because he's a professional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down all these trees. I'm going to put a bunch of deep slate. Uh, dripstone and coarse dirt around here. Make it look like he absolutely trampled this part of the forest. You think I'd be able to dodge the leg, but I didn't. Anyways, that's where we're at right now. And hopefully we can finish off this whole build today in this episode. So wish me luck. Well, we got the jumping spider done. His name's Francis. Check him out. This was probably the hardest spider I ever had to do. It's got a very dynamic pose of jumping over the gap here. Give you guys a little bit more of an aerial view. Kind of jumping across here. You can see that we got like the little bungee cord web over there. Uh, I'm going to get over towards this portal over here too. And I'm going to make it look like spiders are starting to spill out of the portal. But notice how something might be missing. All of our maps have been officially moved inside of the castle here. So you can see the progression of week one to week two, three, four, five, and six of the entire project. And I've got all the new maps right here, ready to go. I'm going to put it in the front of the castle. That way we can see exactly where we ended off on for this whole thing. So we're going to update our final map here. Hopefully I'm not messing this up. I might be messing this up. Am I messing this up? Okay, I'm not messing this up. This just looks crazy. So we got our first layer right there. Second layer. That looks really cool. And then we even got this guy up in here. And our final one right here of the actual castle. So this is the final map now. You can see where we have the, the daddy long leg right there. The back courtyard area. Sadly, none of the flowers really show up on the map. The orb weaver. The wolf spider right here. And the entirety of the garden going all the way around here with like the nice little pathway. And then we come out here. That's obviously where I'm standing. We have the jumping spider leaping across the gap over to the bridge. And it's trampled its way through the entire forest here with its spider web. And we're going to be working a little bit more on the portal area, which is a little bit out of the actual range of it. But we're almost done. This is one more dynamic look at the jumping spider as it leaps its way across over here. And as we work our way around, like, the actual castle itself, I added more foliage. I already showed you guys the Black Widows that are coming out of, like, the little holes and stuff of like that, kind of infesting this area. But here's the area that I didn't show you guys that has been completely trampled by the jumping spider pretty much working its way through here. Now, I know I only placed down a couple cobwebs, but believe me, I've got a lot of stuff planned for the other side of that portal when we connect it up to the nether hub. But... Without further ado, I think that concludes today's episode. I know today was a bit of a longer one, running about 40 minutes into today's episode. I just wanted to kind of bring everything together. I hope you guys all enjoyed the castle, the spiders, but I think it's about time that we pack up our shulker boxes. We move on to the next big ascension, which is going to be for Maddie, the majesty of mushrooms. And I've got a fantastic idea for that. If you guys haven't liked the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you haven't subscribed and you guys want to continue to follow along with some of these builds that we've got building up over here on Twitch, consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.